Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Had the family great here again, and we are going to continue from where we left off in the last episode. So just a recap, in our last episode, we did set up the authentication view, as you can see. And when I enter my email and password and click sign in, I get to see the information on here. So now I get to proceed to communicating with our API, which is currently running. So I'm going to show us that. So here is our API code. And now that we want to work on it, we should as well just start the server. All right, so the server has started localhost 8080 and we have all these parts, which looks cool. So yeah, we are going to come back to this part later on. So yeah, that's about that. So yeah, let's get started with implementing this. And this is an avenue to talk about the Angular services. So we are back on the login code and here is what the uh, submit function looks like. So whenever we click on this function, maybe not clicking on it directly, but anything that leads to this function being called, then we want to make a request to our API to try to log the user in based on the imputed data. So that's what we are going with. And because the process we want to achieve is going to be an asynchronous, then we can make this function an async function. Like that. Now we can make use of the await and so on. So, so far so good according to the folder structures. We have the app, we have the components, and we have the page, which looks good. So in here, I can have a new folder called utils, where I can just store random stuff that we might want to use. Then inside utils, I'm going to have a file for my constants. So constants.ts. And this constant is going to hold information such as the domain path. And yeah, we can start with that. So that should be a spot cost domain URL. Cool. So back on our login, we can literally just install ASIOS, try to make the request here, and that should work. However, according to Angular, yeah, we are coming back to Angular now. We tend to do things in a structured manner. And for situations like this, where you want to group some services together, and in this case, we want to have a service to try to log in. We want to have a service to register a user. Then we want to have a service to kind of authenticate a user. So on that note, we are going to be looking at services. So just like we have for the utils folder, here I'm going to create a new folder for services. And for the services, I'm going to create a new one. And this is going to be auth service. So there's a little bit of something about services that defines how they are used. So, yep. Services usage is actually what we call dependency injection. So the services is going to be the dependency and you making use of it wherever you want to use it is you injecting the dependency. Okay. So how do we define a service? And to define a service, we use the injectable charge here. So remember when we define our components, we use component, but for service, we use injectable. Then after defining the injectable, we are going to specify where it's going to provide that in. And yep, I'm going to use root. Root signifies that anybody, any part of this uh, page of this system can make use of this injectable. Okay? Can make use of this service. And now that we've defined that, we can now export class auth service. Cool. So in here, we can define all the services we want, and we can also define the variables associated with it. For instance, we will need the login URL here, which is equals to, we have the constants, so we have the domain URL from there, plus the URL itself. So if we come back to our backend code, we get to see what the login URL looks like. So this is it, copy that. And we can attach it to this. So for now, we are working with the login URL. So let's just limit it there. So we'll quote there. So next, we can define the function to undo login in. And by default, we have fetch on most JavaScript environments. 
However, I prefer Asus, and as a result of that, I'm going to install Asus. So according to the package lock, it means we install things using NPM. So I'm going to maintain that. So NPM I Asus. Okay, so Asus is installed and we can import it. So here we are going to have import Asus from Asus. Cool. Now we can define the function to perform the login operation. So async login. So I think this is giving us an idea already. So I'm going to get in the data, which is going to be, yeah, let me remember where we defined that. So if we come down to the components, to the auth and the auth TS. Yeah, I think we define the data here. So now that we have our constants, maybe we can have a utils for type as well. So here we can have types dot TS. That way we can easily group this. So here we can copy this. Come down to the types paste here. So it's been exported anyways. So come back to alt fix all this. So we are going to import this from types. Cool. We are going to import that from types as well. Then for register, I believe, yeah, register doesn't seem to need it. Nope, nope, nope. I don't want it to import from there. So let's try to do it manually since we are not getting the uh, response we expect. So, yeah. Yeah, this is where I'm expecting it to come from. Um, let me verify the login. Yep. So this is also trying to get it from here. We should not be. So it's no longer exported from here. It's imported though, but not exported. So that should not work. So let's come back to the login. Let's remove the top here. And here I'm going to have this. So this is better. So we're trying to determine where to import the aux input from. That was what changed our flow. But now we figure out um, a better way. Okay, so we have a structure const um, response. So we are spotting the response. Await Azure's post, the login URL, then the data. That is basically the structure. However, we want to throw an exception if an error occurs. So this is meant to be a service and it's not going to do more than just being a service. So we are not going to do lots of complex operations here. All it's doing is get the data we need perform the login operation and return whatever message or data we need to work with on whoever is making use of the service. So on that note, we are going to try to cache the error here. So dot cache. So we have error. And here we just want to throw the error. So throw new error, error dot response dot data. And in this case, our message or error in this case is going to be error. Cool. So that's what we are expecting from our backend, and that way we can control things. So what it means is if we make use of this service and we have an issue, all we are just going to be listening to is an error message. This the error structure, the error location has already been handled. Okay. Then because we don't know what the response exactly is, we can try to console log it for now. Console.log response.data. Yep, so that's literally it. So now that we've defined the service, how do we make use of a service? So coming back into our login here, to make use of service, we actually want to define a constructor. So in here, we define our constructor. So with the constructor defined, to inject a service, all we have to do is just type in private. Then the variable you want to represent the service with, in this case, is going to be auth service. Then the service itself, which is auth service. Like that. So now we've injected the service into our login components. And with that done, we can come in here. We can try to cache, try and cache. 
So await this dot auth service login data, then cache. So for now, I'm just going to console log error dot message. So let's have it as error of error. Where is this coming from? Okay, for now, let's just use unknown just to move forward. We can figure that out later on. And if it's unknown, it's complaining about uh, this, then maybe we can try any for now. So technically, it should be of type error, but for some reason, it's not recognizing it. So we fix that later on. So this is now a cleaned up um, structure we have. Let's see if this works. So back in here, so let's type in our email and let's type in random password. Let's also open up the network tab to see if it's actually making the request. So follow three invalid credentials. Let's see what we we'll have on the call. So, so as you can see, we have invalid credentials, which we can easily post somewhere to the user to let them know that the credentials they've entered is invalid and so on. So looks like we are kind of close to what we need. So let's get our MongoDB viewer. It seems we have some user the other time we were creating the API. So let's verify we have it. So MongoDB Compass. Okay, so we have a user with test.test.com. I'm not sure what the password is, but yeah, let me just test this and see if we guess right. So I'm going to use secrets. All right, so this time around we get the token, which means um, secret is the information. So looking good. Cool. So another thing you probably want to do in scenarios like this, maybe you don't want this to be visible. Most likely, whoever is making a request to your application is the one using the application as me. The person probably knows the password. So this is mostly not a big deal, as I mean that the client application belongs to the client. But just in case you want to be secure uh, oriented, probably because this is a financial system, you most likely want to encrypt the data. So you are going to encrypt it with an encryption key on your end, and the backend is going to have a decryption key to decrypt the data. So that's just the idea there. So as you can see, we are able to get the information. However, we want to be able to let the user know when there is an issue. So again, if I try to sign in, I get this so invalid credentials. So we are going to be making use of a package called Toaster Service. So let's look for it. So there we have it, NGS Toaster. So this is what it looks like, and this is how to install it. So we are going to copy this, come back to our code, then open the terminal, install this. So now this is installed. To make use of this service, we are going to come down to our app under the config session, and this is where we are going to register the service, this package, so that it's available across the app. So under the provider, I can just bring this down so that we have things structured out. And in here, we want to get provide toaster. So it's not recognizing it, that means we have to manually import it. So we can come here, import from engine s to star and here we want to bring in provide to star so as you can see we have provide router we have provide zone detection just like that we're going to have provide to star here cool and coming back to our login service where we want to make use of to star we're also going to import the service itself here because it's going to be service just like we have with our auth service so here you are going to have import from nglx toaster. And here we are going to have toaster service. Like that. So finally, we are going to inject it into our components using this structure. So here I just have private 
toasts are then across to toast style service like that. Now, when we have an issue, so wherever we have an error with the request made to the auth service, we can use toast style service to show the error. So we are still going to maintain the message there. However, here we're going to have this dot toaster dot arrow. So let's just copy this out and try to understand what parameter the error function takes in. So as you can see, it takes in the message and the title. So the message is going to remain where it is. Then the title is going to be an error. So we can have an exclamation mark here. Cool. I believe our server is still running cool. So let's come back here and make our request again. So using the bad email, using random stuff, let's sign in. All right, so it looks like there is an issue, unexpected synthetic this. So we need to enable all this module, as you can see. And because the toaster service is making use of the animation module, and because we've not enabled it, we can't use the total service. So that was the last line of action. Let's come back into our code. So coming back to the coffee, the module we need is provide animations. And I think this should come by default. I don't know. Let's confirm. So import this from at Angular slash platform browser slash animations okay so it came with it and here we can now provide animations and in here we can just specify that as well provide animations and save so page loaded and we have information about the new um module we just included so let's come back to our browser and now let's enter random stuff again and let's see what will happen. So, yep, so something happened, but we didn't see anything eventually. So something happened, obviously. So I would suggest we just restart the server and see if that changes this. Okay, let's try this out again, refresh. All right, so we are not getting the effect of this. So since something is still missing, let's look for it. All right, so after coming back to the to style NPM, I noticed that we are missing this. So we don't have the styles to give us the effect we need. So let's come back to our code to fix this. So coming back to angular.json, we can close this. I think we don't have issue there. So this is on test. We are going to have this on build as well. So here we're going to have node modules slash engine at dash toaster then toaster dot css. So I'm just to copy this as well. Come down to the build parts. Yeah, and paste. Okay, save. So just to be on the safer side and get to restart the server. Again, server is running, coming back to our browser, bad email, and let's sign in. All right, so now we have this. So error invalid credentials, which looks good. However, when we log in with right information, let's get this from the Mundo Compass, tests at test.com, use valid password, and now we have the token which we are not using for anything yet. So that's looking good. That's fine. So before we close up this whole process, let's define the service to undo our sign up itself. So very similar to the sign in. So let's come back to our code to implement this. So we can close this for now. Come back to our service. Um, here we are going to define the register URL. So domain auth register, I believe that's the endpoint. So coming back here, we have the async register. 
So the same thing against the data it builds and almost same information. So we have this um, push out. So console.log response. Yeah, maybe we can do that for this. However, here I'm just going to return response.data. Cool. So I do to copy most of what we have here to the register side. So let's copy it. Come back to the register. This. So we need the odd service. And we need the toaster service. Cool. So this is going to be register. And yeah, this would undo the error situation. And here we can await the message. So also order calls message. Or let's call it response. Okay, we are expecting the message. So we've handled the response from the service side. So this is message, which is a string. And here we can have this dot toaster dot source Then here we can have the message. Then we can have success. And after we are done displaying all this message, we can then revert back to the register side. Okay? I'm not really sure what this message is setting on the anyways. So let me just pause and log it just to be on the safer side. So yeah, we do that. Come back here. We get our email, firstly guest email. So I'll copy this email, come to sign up, enter my email and enter my password. So we sign up. So the message was user created. Okay. So it's going to be data dot message. Okay, cool. So let's quickly fix that. Come back to the auth service. So this is going to be dot message. Cool. So back to the register, we no longer need the console log here. So if we try to register with that same user again, let's see what happens. All right, so user already has it, which looks good, which looks fine. And if you try to sign in with that user, we have this. Okay, everything looks good. So let's complete the workflow itself. Let's come back to our code. So once you are done signing up, we want to redirect you back to the login page. And on that note, we are going to need the router service. So here we are going to have the private router like that. And in here, we are going to have the router service. Doesn't look like we have a router service. Actually, what we just have is a router. Okay, so now with the router, once the registration is successful, we can return back to this dot navigate the login. I don't think that's the right one. I think that should be sign in. All right, so with that done, let's test this ultimately. So let's have a new user. So the new user is admin at favorite.com. So we are assuming that someone from Fringate wants to register on Finsa. And actually, this should be on signing up. This user does not exist. Let's confirm. Okay, the user does not exist. Now we can copy this and go to sign up. So if we click on sign up, so user successfully created and it's redirected back to the signing page where we can now use that info and signing. Cool. And now we can confirm from our compass to see that we have list of all this data. Let's refresh. So as you can see, we have two users, firstly just .email, then admin at fingrate.com. So it looks like our authentication service is working and we've introduced ourselves to services. So we are going to be concluding this episode here. And in the next one, we are going to access our dashboard where we are going to add the avenue to set the services up. Cool then. So if you enjoyed the whole process and if you are enjoying my approach to Angular, 
And the Nibet comes up, and Nibet comments if you want to disapprove. And that's the dice. See you in the next episode. Bye for now.